Welcome. In some denominations, you'd make a trip to the pastor's study for answers to the really tough questions. Well, let's see what we can do here. Merry meet. Blessed be. And welcome to yet another session. In the revived, in a very different pastor's study. Yeah, very different. And here we are in my study, and we're... I've been looking at the situation in B.B. Air, Arkansas. Seeker's Temple, fairly well established. But they decided to move because to be more central to where their people come from. That's reasonable. And they walked into City Hall and let them know that they were building a church. And they were very warmly received and got a lot of assistance. And everything was going along fine until such time as the Pagan Pride Festival came and they wanted a permit for the park and that's when they when the powers that be in B.B. Arkansas discovered that Seeker's Temple was not Christian and so suddenly cease and desist orders suddenly their high priest is arrested and quite a number of other incidents such as I understand that somebody was shining lights into their house and also people shouting things and these are Christians and some of the words that they shouted from their cars are words that uh, I was taught that Christians didn't use Now, I am in a bit of a unique situation. I am a Wiccan high priest. I was trained by Jerome Birnbaum, who also has the title of Right Reverend, and he has had the title of Bishop. I miss the guy. He died in 2005, not long after ordaining me. I miss him. But the kind of ordination that he passed on to me meant that I've got a couple of things that I can do. One, be a Wiccan high priest. And the other, To incorporate Yeshua Bar Joseph into my pantheon. Jerome taught the Kabbalah. I miss him very much. Jerome taught the Kabbalah and the Kabbalah brings an awful lot together and I learned how to reconcile the path that I was on and the path that I used to be on into a new path. And that's pretty good because back in 1975 I was getting hassled by a bishop and as a matter of fact well he didn't want me because I was too much of a traditionalist Anglo-Catholic and all the other bishops and everybody else were just giving me a bunch of double talk and finally I wound up leaving Christianity altogether. Now I'm able to look at both and realize that well the beginning of wisdom is what you don't know, right? The beginning of wisdom is knowing what you don't know. And how much do we not know about the divine? And there are some things that I did discover. Nine points 
in the Christian's Bible. And I'd like to point out that I make use of the King James Version because of the clarity of its English and the fact that too many of the newer versions are, are the result of somebody's particular axe to grind. But there are nine points that I found that really need to be looked at by Christians. Number one, Psalm 95, verse 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. A great king above all gods. Sounds like King David recognized and respected other gods. Doesn't mean we have to follow them all. Does mean that we should respect them. Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 through 39. Jesus' two great commandments, which he says sums up the Old Testament. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now that frees us from some of the complicated rules of the Old Testament, which had come to be so complicated that by Jesus' time it was just about impossible to completely follow them each and every nitpicky one. Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 47. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? That's the conversion of Cornelius, a Roman centurion. Doubtless he was going to continue to follow Mithras, but that's besides the point. This was the decision that Gentiles who become Christians do not have to become Jews or be under the Old Testament. Which means also I don't have to eat bacon. Or excuse me, I don't have to pass by bacon. I like bacon. And it does mean, yeah, well, if you really f want to follow the nitpicky stuff in the Old Testament, uh, join a synagogue. John chapter 4 verse 40. This is at the tail end of the story of the woman at the well. And the woman at the well, please bear in mind, was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans asked Jesus to stay with them for a while. And so he stayed in Samaria for two days, stayed in the land of these people that his fellow Jews of Judea and Nazareth would have considered dirt under their feet. But Jesus had no problem ministering to them, had no problem drinking their water, eating their food, or whatever. John 10:16. Jesus said, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. And I pity the fool who's going to presume to know who these are, and if they do, uh, can I sublet your, some space on your uh, private mountaintop? Might Jesus and be smart enough to present himself to those other people in a form that would be re relevant and respected by them? in the same manner as he presented himself to the Jews of Judea? And let's think about Mithras, Baldur, Amidaba, so many of them. Matthew 8, Matthew 8, 5 through 13, is the story of Jesus healing the sermon, servant of a Roman centurion, a Roman centurion, an officer in the occupying army, and doubtlessly a Mithraist, because that was the official religion of the Roman army. 
not only does he speak well of the centurion's faith, but also in verses 11 and 12 he speaks of how many will one day come together and who is not going to be so blessed. John 16 verse 12 I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. There's more to tell you, but you're not up to it. Is what I would say today. Guess what that means? There's more than what's in the Bible. There's more than what's in the Bible. There's more. As Jesus prepares to ascend, he tells them that. And who is going to tell us that we've been told everything? Jesus said so. Acts chapter 5 verses 34 through 39 the warning of Gamaliel he tells the his fellow members of the Sanhedrin the same body that condemned Jesus not too long before. Look at all the various so-called messiahs that we've seen come and go. And he lists them. There may be more, but he sure listed a bunch there, including one that happened in the year of the taxation. In other words, uh, there was a pseudo-messiah running around when Jesus was busy being born. And he warns them. If this is of men, it's going to come to naught, like all these others. But if God is behind Jesus' followers, not only will they not be able to stop them, but they might be guilty of fighting against God. And then finally, Matthew 12, verse 31 a favorite of mine, warns that all sins and blasphemies will eventually be forgiven, except one, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We forget one part and remember another. Jesus was casting out a devil and Pharisees who were watching were accusing Jesus of using devils to cast out devils. And there is where Jesus made his very famous statement that we all remember about how a house divided against itself cannot stand. And he points out if he used devils to cast out devil, now that would be illogical. And it wouldn't do much for the devil if he was serving the devil. But he went on to point out that there will be only one sin which will not be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Therefore, based on all these. I too am forced to respect even these people that make accusations because I don't know what the Holy Spirit in them is doing. I can only tell you what the Holy Spirit is doing in me. And in that Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit that, well, I learned as a Wiccan, there's a spark of the divine within each of us. I studied for a while in a Jodo Shinshu Buddhist temple. And I remember the priest there saying that there is a Buddha in each of us. So even this Holy Spirit has a 
common thread through ever so many paths. So, we've got to respect each other. We have to. It's necessary. And, even if I can't make an absolute pronouncement about anybody, I can make this pronouncement. You've got a lot less to lose by respecting somebody than by hating them. You're going to lose a lot less if you respect somebody and you're mistaken than if you hate somebody and you're mistaken. Think about that for the next few days. And hopefully I'll be seeing you again soon. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.